This is not a new world. It is simply an extension of what began in the old one. It has patterned itself after every dictator who has ever planted the ripping imprint of a boot on the pages of history since the beginning of time. It has refinements, technological advances, and a more sophisticated approach to the destruction of human freedom. But like every one of the super states that preceded it, it has one iron rule. Logic is an enemy and truth is a menace. IonCitrus.com and The Lone Wolf presents Efforts to Save the Sheeple of the World, the Sheeple of Citrus County, and the Sheeple of the United States in this streaming freedom video and radio broadcast. Okay, my friends, today's Saturday, February 8th, 2014. And as probably a lot of you have seen, the election has have already started. Make no mistake, uh, folks, we live in a empire. We get a lot, we are allowed to choose from the elitist group of candidates every four years at the national level, and on the local level, we get to choose between the uh, Republicans and the Democrats, and occasionally a few independents who generally, as a rule, never have a chance in hell on getting elected. But uh, there really isn't much choice when, you, when you're at the top level. You have two emperors, two parties who have different candidates for the emperors, we're just like Rome. And one emperor usually favors the state and doesn't give a crap about the people. And the other emperor has a little more concern towards the people. But ultimately, the uh, both of them uh, are beholding to the corporate states of America. And that's what the United States has become. It hasn't happened overnight. But it's happened. And if we don't wake the population up, it's only going to get continually to get worse. So the rich will keep getting richer. The middle class will become less and less. And they'll be more poor all over. The choice is up to you. If you vote for the Republican Party, they're the ones that are the hand puppets of the corporate American states. And as I said, uh, they really have no concern for the population. All you have to do is look at the years past news and realize that they, they've, uh, every, everything that they ever uh, attempted to help anybody, uh, these individuals, just for the sake of being uh, stubborn and and uh, a dis a total disregard for the very well being uh, very well being of our population uh, have decided that they would oppose Obama at whatever cost, and it continues to go on and on with actually no end in sight. Back in 1978, the late 70s, uh, I worked for a uh, bank in Crystal River. And I always remember that uh, the banks would complain how the government had too much control over them. So, uh, needless to say, that's nothing like what hap has happened today. Uh, the Bush administration and through the years, uh, the corporate America has taken control and they've uh, were able to get the rules and regulations that regulated these industries and protected the public, they were able to get those rules uh, uh, destroyed, uh, uh, no longer uh, in existence. They passed laws to rescind those rules and regulations. So what we had uh, was the great 
a recession, which is still going on. A bad sign when Obama took uh, office was that he kept most of Bush's people in the administration, a very foretelling sign of things to come. So as you can see, the Democratic Party isn't yet truly entrenched for the people as they once were. But uh, there still are a better choice uh, than anything the other side would have. Now, if you were to disagree, that's fine. And there are some of you out there that no doubt cannot uh, become uh, uh, objective and see what's happening. That's unfortunate because you have been subjected to the electronic Skinner box for so long. Uh, for any, those of you who are not familiar with that, uh, Pavlov's box and the Skinner box, later's experiments, uh, uh, taught basically uh, uh, demonstrated how classical behavioral conditioning is done. And ba back in the 18, late 1800s, it was started by a Russian uh, named Pavlo, P-A-V, Pavlo, L-O, I believe. And you can look it up. There's YouTube videos. But anyway, our electronic box or Skinner's box was Skinner was another scientist that continued in the footsteps uh, of Pavlo. Uh, he continued and basically uh, uh, from those early beginnings they have learned how to manipulate uh, the public consciousness and although this is the same idea that corporations use in getting you to buy their products they have subliminal messages in their advertising also. So this is a standardized pr procedure that, uh, that goes on on a daily basis. And for those who cannot recognize it, uh, there's really no hope for you. Uh, you have to be, uh, you're like in a cult. You would have to be deprogrammed. And unfortunately, a mass, an in mass deprogramming of those individuals is, uh, is impossible. The only hope we have is uh, enough objective thinking people out there going to the polls to make sure that these people lose control of any hole or say in the government. They've uh, attained it in the past. They've put their own people in the Supreme Court. That's why corporations now can funnel unlimited amounts of money into these campaigns. And this must be stopped. So unless we uh, try to do it at the ballot box, ultimately, if you don't do it there, if you don't get you, uh, your people out to vote, uh, then we really won't have no other recourse in the long run. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how long that would take to transpire, but I hate to see it come to that. And on that note, I just wanted to mention, you know, there are several, I mean, many government agencies, including FEMA, that have been acquiring a massive amounts of ammunition. And the latest to have done this, uh, put up on their requisition websites, that are that is seeking out uh, bids uh, from manufacturers to supply them with ammunition. Get this. It's the United States Post Office. Back when the people, uh, Democrats ruled, actually, uh, you would get instances where, um, you know, uh, private companies, corporations would sell things to the government. And, uh, you know, there wasn't enough oversight. And the government wound up paying like three, four hundred dollars five hundred dollars $400, $500 for uh, toilet seats or Two hundred dollars for a hammer. Well, that thing, those things are, uh, you know, well, so this are uh, even though that that was, uh, you know, uh, uh, private corporations doing it to the United States government. People in charge tended to, to think that somehow or another, uh, oh, this problem can be eliminated uh, by putting uh, the corporations in charge. Oh, right. Uh, let's see, we're going to put the people in charge of 
the government who actually been ripping off the government. So you've put uh, the chicken hawk in charge of the hen house. So talk about ripping off when uh, Bush and Cheney invaded Iraq. Cheney's private company, the Halliburton, uh, made all kinds of uh, money uh, on on their transactions with no bid contracts for his uh, uh, Halliburton uh, uh, corporation to transport things, oil, you name it. They were they were getting uh, no bid contracts and unbelievable amounts of money to uh, uh during that war and that war that's still going on and you know uh, we have to take back this country we have to take it back the people have to take it back the only strength the people have is when we work together in mass and uh the the electronic skinner box keeps portraying different shows and things to uh, put in our mindset to those who can't see it uh, the fact that we should be at each other's throats that we should be uh, stabbing each other in the back that of course that's the old rule they're using divide and conquer the only way we will ever get this country back is if we unite and unite we must When our country flourishes, it's when everybody flourishes. I mean, this is how it has been in the past. When all segments of the society do well, then we all do well. The country as a whole does well. Things are prosperous for everyone. I've said that forever. I've said that over and over again. And now my friend Robert Reich uh, formerly of the Bill Clinton's administration, Labor Secretary, has come out with a video which basically uh, says it also, but he has the facts and figures that he put together to back it up. Of course, I knew it. It was just common sense, but he has actually... Uh, this is a great video. We have it available. If anybody in the area in Citrus County would like to uh, get together and have a viewing of this, it's about an hour and a half long. Just email us at ioncitrus.com. You'll see an uh, email linked in the middle of the page down at the bottom. <clears throat> Just email us and say, uh, you, you know, if you have four, five, six, seven, or eight people you want to get together and watch that, uh, we'll make arrangements. Uh, we also need volunteers for ioncitrus.com for uh, to cover news events around the county. So please think about doing that. So uh, there's a little clip here from, uh, from uh, Robert's uh, video, and Equality for All. That's what we've got today. Over the 1% at the top have more money than over half the country of Americans. So, that's something wrong with that picture. Okay, we're going in my uh, Mini Cooper. Now, the thing you ought to rem uh, know about this uh, Mini Cooper is it is small. I'd like having a Mini Cooper I sort of identify with it. You know, it's pretty little. I feel as if it's proportion, that we are in proportion. You know, me and my car, we are sort of together facing the rest of the world. fairness is quote the defining issue of our time and what the millions this kind of gaping inequality 
gives lie to the promise that's at the very heart of America. There is income inequality in America. There always has been. And hopefully, there always will be. If inequality is at a very much higher level, who cares? Income inequality has been been ticking up. I think it's about envy. I think it's about class warfare. It's class warfare, and it's the kind of language that you would expect from a leader of a third world country, not the president of the United States. It's true, because the United States of America is not a third world country by any measure, except perhaps income inequality, <laughs> where we rank da, 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 worse than the Ivory Coast, worse than Cameroon, 64th, ah, in your face, Uruguay, Jamaica, and Uganda. Yeah. <laughs>